This video is designed to assist in the training and education for the cleaning, processing, care, and handling of minimally invasive valve instruments, specifically Geister Valve Gate Classic Instruments, Geister Valve Gate Pro, and the Vitalitex Signet Flexible Aortic Cross Clamp. Please note that this video is a supplement and not a substitute for the manufacturer's IFU. Care and handling of minimally invasive devices. Since they are very delicate, always handle mix instruments with extreme care. Do not drop instruments or hit against hard surfaces. Avoid excessive force on the instruments. Any damage or alteration of the device's components can affect the functioning and safety, especially scissors, needle drivers, graspers, and knot pushers. Avoid prolonged contact with saline solution. Avoid strongly acidic or alkaline detergents. Use neutral. If damage is noticed, the instrument should be put aside and sent in for service. Contact your sales representative or the manufacturer for evaluation and repair. Our widely used classic valve gate line are high quality single shafted devices with a large variety of working ends to be utilized in a small incision. The handles are nicely balanced, black in color, highly durable, and can be ordered in various lengths to suit the surgeon's needs. The classic valve gate instruments have detachable flush ports that are connected to the device by inserting it into the flush hole on the shaft just above the handle. Then swing the clip on the flush port around the shaft to secure it into place. As seen in the IFU pre-cleaning instructions, these instruments need to be flushed thoroughly after each case since the lumens of the shaft are hollow and can collect blood and tissue. This can harbor bacteria as well as affect the instrument's safety and performance. Valve Gate Pro devices are comprised completely of high-grade surgical stainless steel. They are ultra lightweight and have perfect balance, and they have precision components. Unlike the Valve Gate Classic, the Pro instruments do not need a flush port attachment. The flush port is built into the bottom of each Pro instrument which enables a full injection straight flush of the interior of the shaft for improved cleaning. The Valve Gate Pro instruments have an adjustment knob installed at the base of each device. Adjustments can be made to the jar opening according to the surgeon's preference for less fatigue and time savings. The cleaning staff should always open up the jaws for processing. These adjustment knobs are also color-coded for easy identity. Scissors have black knobs, graspers have silver, and the needle holders have gold. Pre-cleaning and cleaning of valve gate classic and pro instruments. Follow the IFU for specific processing parameters. Operating room team to submerge devices in cold tap water after use to remove gross soiling. The goal here is to not let them sit too long before blood can dry and adhere to them. Transfer to processing department per your hospital's guidelines. Five minute immersion in cold water. Lure lock and disposable syringe flushing jet pistol 10 seconds. Brush with a surgical soft scrub brush. Automated ultrasonic cleaning and following your automated cleaning system is acceptable. Dry the devices following drying cycle, lint-free towel and sterile compressed air may be utilized. If your hospital uses a spray gel in the operating room, please note it needs to be completely removed prior to processing. Lubrication and sterilization. Even if your automated washer has a lubrication cycle, it is highly recommended to lubricate all of your minimally invasive devices using a steam permeable instrument milk prior to sterilization. On your single shafted instruments and flexible clamp and any other devices with moving parts. 
it is important to spray the areas with movable components and to actuate them freely to work in the lubrication. This greatly increases their performance. After lubrication, the instrument should be secured in a tray that has individual device holders or inserts that keep each instrument secure during sterilization and transport. This will decrease the chance that the working ends will be damaged and it keeps them free of unnecessary contact with each other. Putting devices loose in a tray can bend working ends, loosen ratchets, and damage the delicate tips of these devices. Sterilization parameters. Follow IFU parameters precisely. Make sure devices are not tightened or in the lock position. Drying time, 10 minutes. Store in a dry, clean, dust-free environment. A tray with inserts to secure instruments is recommended. The Valvegate Mini Thoracotomy Retractor is a low-profile device designed for minimally invasive valve surgery through a right thoracotomy. Each arm has two pivot points to conform the retractor to the surgeon's preferred position. The retractor is equipped with two sets of blades. An additional third smaller size is available. For processing the retractor, it should be disassembled. If the blades are still attached, you can remove them by inserting the blade removing tool at the connection between the blade and the frame and squeeze lightly. Please note to have your other hand below the blade to capture it once it is released. The movable arm of the retractor slides off the frame easily. Please take care in keeping all of the parts together with the retractor set. Italitec Signet Flexible Aortic Cross Clamp. Follow IFU steps to ensure proper processing. A 12-step poster is provided as a guide. The following steps in this video are supplemental information. The signet is designed for surgeons to cross clamp through a small incision with the device in a rigid position then to be converted to a flexible clamp for additional space in the surgical field. Anyone that handles the signet needs to know how to engage and disengage the jaws. By squeezing the handles, the ratchet engages and the jaws will close. The signet has two ratchet release mechanisms, two buttons in the front for the thumb and forefinger, and one release in the back. If the ratchet is tightly engaged, you must squeeze the handles while pulling the release down simultaneously. This can also be done by engaging the thumb and forefinger release buttons while squeezing the handle. To release the insert, you pull the tip of it in towards the other jaw and it will slide out. These should be discarded as they are single use only. The inserts should be removed and discarded by the OR team. If they are not, it is important for the processing team to have the know-how. To remove the rigid shaft, you merely pull back on it with enough force to release it from the connection near the jaws. To reconnect it, you need to make sure that the orientation of the shaft is lined up correctly. If it is not, it will not connect securely. This is important information to be able to follow in the IFU steps. It is important for the processing team members to know the location of the flush port and the flush exit hole, as it is referenced several times in the IFU for critical cleaning steps. The flush port is located on the outer section of the larger side of the clamp's handle. The flush exit hole is located on the underside of the handle near the ratchet. For steps that detail flushing with a closed shaft, you should close the rigid shaft completely and flush with the exit hole open to release the liquid. For steps that detail flushing the rigid shaft, 
retract the rigid shaft to expose one to two beads. Cover the flush exit hole with your thumb and insert the syringe into the flush port. Liquid will release through the opening at the end of the rigid shaft. It is important to lubricate all moving components of the signet liberally with a steam permeable instrument milk prior to sterilization. This will greatly enhance the quality and the performance of the clamp. Follow the sterilization steps per the IFU. Lubricate with a non-silicone based lubricant. During sterilization, process with the jaws open and the ratchets disengaged. Retract the rigid shaft until one to two beads are exposed. Pre-vacuum cycle. Exposure temperature, 270 degrees Fahrenheit. Exposure time, four minutes. The three sections of the rigid shaft have a flat side, which enables each section to slide into each other. If one of the sections gets turned around, the rigid shaft won't close properly. If this happens, you will need to rotate that portion of the shaft to make sure all of the flat sides are lined up. Please contact us anytime with any questions or for service. Thank you.